So guys, here we are. We're finally doing the Joy-Cons. I know you guys have been asking me for a while to take apart the Joy-Cons, and I've just been waiting to get time with them, really, to do these. I know these are going to be an entire uh, the series on this. This is going to be probably a long video because I have to be kind of careful with these. There's a lot going on in these little tiny containers, and I still want to put it back together so I can play Zelda and everything. So this, uh, this should be fun. Um, I'm not sure which one to start with first. I guess I'll just start with, in this case, the right one we'll start with the right one first and then we'll move on to the left one so let's uh let's see what we can get here so i could tell right away when i looked at these that these were tri-wing screws on the back um i don't see any on the side here for this railing i'm sure that they are either on they're probably on the inside uh there's probably screws coming in from the inside to hold it on the other side so i guess we'll just get started with the uh, other side there we go just want to get my paper I do not these, this is going to be mildly challenging I will say that these these joy cons do not look like they're very user friendly to take apart so this will be this will be interesting but let's uh I guess let's get these screws off Okay, so I got the back off. Um, you want to be very careful if you open these <laughs> uh, because I found out that there are ribbon cables here that are running out and underneath. Now, they're just really attached, so uh, you, you probably still could rip them. So if you ever, for whatever crazy reason, you need to open these, be very careful because they are on ribbon cables as you see there. Now, I see the battery right away. It appears to be... Okay, no, good. It's not soldered in. That's good news. Um... I think I can pull this battery right out then. Doesn't look like it's super, uh, it's like attached to really anything in terms of glue, hopefully. So I can try to do that. Now, a lot of times they would want to glue these batteries down because, of course, we're going to be shaking or running around with these things. And you don't want to feel that, that weird rocking around of the battery. So let me, um, let me go ahead and try to get this battery out of here. So I took, I managed to take the HD Rumble out first. This is, I guess, the motor that runs it. Uh, if you're not sure, it's using a lot of small haptic, basically haptic uh, vibration in there, which uses a spring and then a, uh, a basically a piece of metal that then pushes up. And what's nice is you can do very short range, very quick vibrations instead of having to wind up an older style motor and do one type of vibration. This would allow it to vibrate uh, pretty uh, pretty accurately, I will say that. And that's from what I could tell looking in here so far, that's all there is to the motor inside. I mean, that's that's what causes all the vibration. So let's um let's go a little further here. I'm going to try to get this battery out. Also, I do see the antenna right away as well. I should have pointed this out. This appears to be the entirety of the antenna. That seems to be it. Now, it's not a lot of cable run at all, actually. Uh, this seems to be it. Um, I'm trying to remember which one was the main problem, if it was the right one or the left one. I should have remembered. Okay, that's fine. But I'm telling you now, it looks like when this folds back over, not a lot is stopping it, I guess, from working. But that's very limited cable run for an antenna. I mean, it's running up from here to here. And then this is your main antenna here that's, that's trying to communicate. Um, hmm. Something like this is probably the reason that we're getting some pretty pretty bad uh, signal out of the Joy-Cons overall. Now, I don't think it's it's as bad as people are claiming it to be because I have not had too many issues, although I don't use the Joy-Cons a lot. Usually they're just attached to the system when I use it, so it's not a big deal, but I understand that some people are having issues with it. Uh, we have saw it with the press obviously having a lot of problems, and then now there's stuff coming out saying that the press had... Uh, a bad batch, possibly. And be very careful with these batteries. Very careful. There we go. It did have minor glue underneath holding it right here, for example. It's just almost like sticky glue. You need to do that, though, so the battery doesn't flop around in there. That makes sense. Uh, that's good. The battery is pretty small. It's not a big battery. This is, uh, like we said, it's supposed to be five, 525 milliamp hours. That's perfectly fine for something of this size that does not draw a lot of power. As we see, it gets supposedly 20 hours per. I have not tested mine for 20 hours off of the system so i don't know for sure 
but I was trying to think of ways I could make this antenna better, but man, everything is so tightly packed in here. I'm not really sure how I would go about doing that. Uh, I mean, you may be able to upgrade the antenna, but from where it runs, from here to here, there's just not a lot of places I could even put the antenna if I wanted to. Um, because remember, it does fold close very carefully, and it kind of sits behind your charging rail here. That's where your antenna is. That's why when, if you remember, they were doing things like putting their hand over the Joy-Con here, and it was losing its uh, reception. Well, that's because that's where your antenna is. It's right there. Now, there might be a way to run a cable from here along the side here, maybe to get in. I don't, I don't know if that would have enough room there. Maybe. You might be able to run the antenna a little longer up to here um, or even out the other side over here. I don't even know if I could. I don't know if I could reposition this, though. So we'll just have to think about that a little later. I'm sure someone will come out with some kind of modification to do it. But let's uh, let's get a little further into this guy real quick. Okay, this is where it gets a little tricky. See, the cable is underneath here, um, and this kind of tries to fold up on me. So these are always the worst when you start seeing this stuff happen because you do not want to damage that cable. Fortunately, I seem to be able to get to it. I have a clear path, so I should be able to flip the cable up. Getting back is going to be tough. Getting this plugged in correctly is not going to be fun. Okay, so I really like that this is all one piece right here. Um, specifically, this part is great. A lot of times if I do like a PS3 controller or even PS4 controller, it's a big pain because this just kind of falls apart when you take it apart. Uh, I'm, I'm glad this is like semi-sealed with the spring intact and everything. That's probably why it gets that nice click is because it's all internal and it has the spring there. So that's, uh, that's actually really, really well done on that. It has a cable that just plugs in. Sweet. All right, good. <clears throat> now... Here we are with the main circuit board. At this point, I can unplug the railing uh, ribbon cables here, which is fine. I want to talk about the locking mechanism here as well. Um, just looking at it directly, it's, it's simply a piece of plastic here that when you push this button down, this piece of plastic pushes back in. There's actually a spring on this side that I was able to spot right in here. So when you push this down, that spring pushes. This piece of plastic goes in, and then it clicks when you take it out. That's why when you push it down, it has like a sled. It's curved on this side. So when it's running down the rails, it jumps that. That clicks back up, and that's why I get that nice click and that feel. It's a very basic, very common uh, style to do that. And I could see it over time wearing out because it is just a spring that's in there. Uh, it's very possible. Fortunately, the mechanism is not on the main unit. It's on the Joy-Con. So the Joy-Con would just need to be replaced, not the entire system, which is a good thing if you really consider it because this is the most standard way to lock these Joy-Cons in or anything in general. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, that, 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 that's a good mechanism. Also, this is where the uh, rails would then click in and run power. We see here, I assume the other Joy-Cons will be very similar. There is uh, pins here that touch the side where it would, when you slide it down, it clicks. These pins touch inside the system. We looked inside the system already. This makes sense. These make contact. The system charges. Uh, the buttons SL, SR, or S, yeah, SL, SR also run through that. So that's one cable controls the power. The other one controls where the buttons press on this breadboard here. So everything is uh, pretty straightforward on that as well. Now let's get into the circuit board itself. Now, after taking the joystick out, I realized that it has, like, this guard here that actually stops, I would assume, dust and debris from getting behind the thumbstick. 
Um, but mine is actually sticking up a little bit. I'm not really sure why that is. Like I said, it's just a guard, so it's nothing like super important. I'm not really sure mine's sticking up though. It's almost like it doesn't fit into where it needs to right here. It should fit right up against this rail, kind of. And I think it's just set up so that there's pressure from the joystick on this when you push down. When you put it back into place, that way it kind of seals it a little bit. But it's just something interesting to note. Okay, so we have our board out. <clears throat> um, let's see, we have, okay, so the IR sensor on the bottom does run through a ribbon cable to the bottom port here. That is, what is that from? That is from, okay, that's probably from, I assume that would be from the NFC reader. I believe that is also on this one as well, um, right here. And that's just running all along this guy. And yes, uh, ooh, I just pushed the spring out, man. <laughs> so the spring located here is for the shoulder. I hate when this happens. This happens now and then whenever you open a system that has a spring, it wants to get away from you. It happens a lot. Any, any of these systems you work on that have springs, and if that spring jumps, it's not fun. So I'm going to take a second to reset this. But that's the in, I mean, that's the inside of it there, minus the buttons that would have to come out. Like, so to get sticky, you'd have to go all the way down to this point to take the buttons out and then clean them. And that's not fun. Trust me, I've had to do it before for other things. 3DSs are really bad about that, too. Um, these are the same type of buttons that are on the 3DS. Uh, looking straight at it, what this is is there is contact underneath. It grounds any button you press, and that tells the system you are pressing it. They're like the little dome-shaped pieces on motherboards. Uh, same exact design that is in a 3DS. That's actually the same type of, uh, this is the same type of button for a power button for the 3DS, this guy here. So overall, it actually is taking a lot of cues from the 3DS design. Like I said, it has the same type of buttons. That is the same type as like the power button for it. Um, so overall, yes, it, it looks like they use that same uh, idea from the 3DS that gives us kind of that clicky button. That's fine. Uh, it is interesting to note. I believe these domes are slightly larger and that's probably why it doesn't feel quite as clicky as a 3DS, but it's still the same idea. Let me go ahead. That's everything. I'm going to put it back together and then we'll start on the next one.
Okay, so that is the right Joy-Con. Um, a little bit of advice before I get into the left one. Uh, don't ever open your Joy-Con unless you have to, because this is a mess of stuff going on in here, and it seemed very easy to where you could break this. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. There's a lot of ribbon cables going through. Some of them are attached to pieces that then get closed, and uh, it, don't open these unless you absolutely have to. Uh, everything went together fine, but I can see how somebody who has never opened a controller or a system to get this apart and then do nothing with it after that <laughs> because it's not fun. I kind of, I'm starting to see why uh, I fix it, takes these apart and they don't put them back together on camera because it is not uh, easy, but it's back together. I'm going to open the other one. This is the more complicated one, I believe compared to this. Um, but I do know that I think it was the left one that was having a lot of issues because that's the one you move link with. So I'm going to open that one and just see, but I don't think I have to go as far as I did with this just because they're going to be relatively the same after the first couple of, uh, screws. So let's open the left one now. Okay, so it looks slightly different. Now there's obviously a few things that won't be the same because it doesn't have uh, the NFC reader, all that stuff. I believe, like I said, that all that's on the right that makes sense because there is extra cables. However, I am currently missing the antenna on this one. Where, Where is the antenna? Man, I guess I do have to take some of this apart. <laughs> I was hoping I'd see the antenna and maybe figure out what's going on, but here we go, I guess. Let's, um, let's, let's work through this. Oh, thank you. Bigger cable. <laughs> this one has a much larger cable cable for that uh that ribbon. Where is the antenna? Alright, so far this one has been easier to take apart, I will say that. The other one seemed to be a little more difficult. This one so far is easier. There's our thumbstick. However, I'm still not seeing our antenna. So this is starting to kind of worry me now because maybe there is some interference going on. Um, that is our, yeah, so they have an entire... That's interesting. They have an entire separate board just for the minus button um, on it. Okay. Separate board entirely for this guy, which the other one did too, so that's fine. Joystick. I might not have to take anything out to get the board out now that I'm looking at it. Now I have to unplug the HD rumble, which is fine. I can unplug that. All right. Uh, these cables, I hate to unplug them because they're such a pain to get back in. You know what? I, I don't think I do have to unplug those now I'm looking at it. So this board will just lift up. I have to at least undo the joystick here. That is the left joystick cable. That's fine. Easy enough. And another Phillips head there. Cool. Oh, there it goes. Yes, yeah, so the board just wants to lift right up. That's good. That's usually because there's membrane that has pressure for the uh, for the buttons. That clip. I'm not seeing any real antenna on this board. This is a little interesting. I'm used to seeing an antenna, just like how we had the other one where it had the cable that was running off to a separate antenna. This one does not seem to have that, which makes me think that it's either in this railing here, which would make zero sense. I don't, I don't think that's the case because it's not much different than the other one. Hmm. Or, yeah, see, it's not much different. Or it's actually built into the board. Like, the antenna is on this. It is. Okay, it is. The antenna is on this board. So, here's how this looks like it works. And it should. It's very similar to the PS4 antenna. Um, now, what should be happening here, and this makes a lot of sense as to why this is messing up. <sighs> okay. 
here we go. So when it's closed like this, you're holding it like this. Here's my belief on, on why this is happening. Metal bracket here, that's for the back of the joystick. The antenna is this. Um, this is gonna be kind of hard to show you. This should be the antenna, this top part that's floating. Um, let me see if I can figure out a way for you to see through that. There's traces there at that top part, right up here on this little peak that's sticking out. Those traces, if you see through that, that should be the antenna, believe it or not. It's actually built into the board, and that may be why people are having more issues on this one than the other one, because the other one has like an antenna that's external that's wired. This one does not have that. The PS4 controller has that same idea where it looks like it's um, built into the breadboard part, the motherboard. In this case, this is our antenna. Where is it running to? Okay, so here we go. It has blob of solder here. I bet you I could run a cable from this if I could find a place to put it inside and I could make the antenna work better. Um, now, give me one second. Let me just take a quick look at it a little more. So my only issue is I have no idea where I'd put the cable. Um, you can go as far, honestly, just making a cable that comes off here, just, a, just literally a, a wire that comes off of here and runs around is enough to get it to have better reception, mostly because I could pull it away from this metal box. I think the metal on the back of the Joy-Con, where the joystick is, is probably causing interference, because look, it has to sit right next to it. That it should be where the antenna is. I could be completely off on this, but it looks exactly like what, like I said, the PS4 is running the same way, but it's not sitting next to a piece of metal like this. Um, I can pretty much confirm it if I can double check this chip, what I'm looking at here. Yeah, that's the Broadcom chip. Yeah, okay, so that is the antenna. Um, this isn't... I'm not supposed to be... All right, so this is just disassembly. I'm not trying to hack this up and make it work better. But I think I can. <laughs> like, I, I think I can actually make the range better on this thing. Um, my only concern is I don't know where I'm going to put the cable. All right, guys, so I'm actually going to end this video here. If you want to see the rest of this, I'm actually going to attempt to do something with this antenna if I can. Um, you saw the breakdown of the other one, you saw the breakdown of this one, if you want to see the reassembly of this possibly with a new antenna and then we can test it, check out the next video, but for now I'm going to end this video and start working on that antenna because it's going to get a little further away from what this video was intended for, but thanks for watching guys, uh, I'll see you in the next video.